There was drama on the streets of Mogadishu as the crackdown continued. A woman bystander knocked down by a runaway car thought to be carrying guns. The French Foreign Legion had fired a warning shot as the car veered off the road. The Legionnaires were putting up with no nonsense. It was the same story on every street, with roadblocks throughout the city as troops weeded out the weapons. Patrols were now moving into the murky suburbs controlled by the clan warlords. Though in the back streets there were still plenty of guns and possibly some resistance. Young Ahmed said he would die before he gave up his Kalashnikov. Though for the first time in two years, aid agencies were able to operate without security guards. The gun carts now dismantled, the men disarmed. Guys who yesterday were carrying guns on our technicals outside are today working in the corridors trying to be messenger boys and providing other manual tasks to ingratiate themselves to get another type of job with UNICEF. At the airport, there was intense activity as the massive logistics operation built up, ready to start the relief mission. At feeding compounds like Kitchen 55, the people looked far better than when we first visited them five months ago. Then 20 a day were dying. Last week, there were only three. But Hassan Hussein and his family told us the Americans must provide more than just food. He wants to return home to his village and start planting his crops. The relief effort still needed in Somalia is massive. The truth is that it's not just these people, the hungry, who are living off donated food. It's almost the entire population, some seven million people, who are now dependent on relief supplies. Many Somalis wonder whether the Americans know what they're really taking on. Jeremy Thompson, ITN, Mogadishu.